Marceline Moudon was born on the 12th of November, 1840, in a small area of farm country in the Normandy region of France. Born to a pair of craftsmen, Marceline was deft at working with her hands from a young age. In the days before she was provided materials, Moudon recalled constructing small figures from mud near the stables of her childhood home. By the age of 12, Moudon was already skillfully crafting large figures. Even as just a prepubescent girl, she was all consumed by her efforts. This was only furthered while away at Academy under the instruction of pioneer artist Philippa Salove. This mentorship would prove critical in developing Moudon's relentless methods as an artist. By the time she reached adulthood, Moudon's large works had garnered critical acclaim. In 1866, Moudon premiered her first major work to an uproar at the Paris salons. The work was entitled Illusory Cavern, and to this day, viewers are entranced by the gaze of the figures, both at and away from them. At this time, Moudon was a household name. Her works allured both critics and scholars, and were sought out throughout Europe. Through her connections in the art community of Paris, Moudon met and married French poet Claude Rousseau. Moudon developed a reputation for her fierce discipline as an artist. She was known for toiling away night after night. Rousseau's journals noted many nighttime attempts to visit his wife in the early years of her career. Moudon had grown obsessed with death and what would later be coined existentialism. A recurring theme of abyss is reflected through faceless forms. Despite her marriage, Moudon took many lovers and due to her status as one of the world's most influential artists, this action was largely unquestioned. As a point of pride, and what is widely considered to be latent misandry, she only took on lovers she considered to be her inferior. When asked, she said of her relationship to men, I view a man as an unshaped mess of clay, garish and without form. It supplicates at my hand, begging to become realized. Of course, Moudon's most notable lover was her apprentice, Jacques Girard. Gerard began as a pupil of Moudon's at the height of her career, appearing often as a model for her works and helping her sculpt the hands and feet of large pieces. Over time, Gerard became a gifted sculptor in his own right, with some critics posthumously arguing that he was in fact the greater artist. However, this was not the consensus at the time. Gerard's works came under heavy scrutiny. Always compared to Moudon's, audiences endlessly searched for elements of her aesthetics in his work. Gerard's work was also heavily discredited for its sexual manner. He often sculpted lovers intertwined, and many found it inappropriate for him to be sculpting nude models, as he was Moudon's taken lover. Amidst their tumultuous romance, which saw the creation of many important works for both artists, Gerard couldn't escape the shadow of his lover and teacher. Gerard's comparative commercial failure and Moudon's refusal to leave her husband cleaved irreparable fissures in the lover's bond. In the end, 
Gerard's most famous work would become a bust he sculpted of his lover and mentor. Moudon's gaze was for the first and only time captured bare for the world to see. In 1887, Gerard decided to end his romantic relationship with Moudon. At this time, he appeared mentally ill and destroyed many of his works. In paranoid delusions, he accused Moudon of stealing his ideas and conspiring to kill him. Gerard remained an unkempt and single man until his last moments. He refused to leave his studio until being confined to a psychiatric ward in Belgium to live out his remaining days. Despite his avant-garde works, Gerard's memory has largely faded into obscurity. One wonders what reputation he would have held if he was not inextricably associated with one of history's greatest sculptors. Moudon remained married to Claude Rousseau until his death in 1903. In the years after parting with Gerard, Moudon continued to create some of the most seminal works of her career. She continued working until her quiet passing in her villa in the south of France in 1917, having lived a full life with a prolific career and lasting legacy.